Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Swagged on with Swagger Gaming, bringing you another World of Warcraft video. In this video, I wanted to talk about the Mage Tower challenges and rank each of the seven scenarios from easiest to hardest to complete. If you want to see a full write up on the subject, including difficulty rankings for all 36 specs within each scenario, please check out the post on my Patreon page. I'll provide a link down in the description below. Number seven, Fell Totems Fall. Let's start with the easiest Mage Tower challenge scenario. This one was a no-brainer to me, and it's Fell Totem's Fall, in which you need to defeat Tugar Blood Totem and his giant worm friend. This challenge is for the Windwalker Monk, Beast Mastery Hunter, Disciplined Priest, and Destruction Warlock. I would say the easiest class to beat Tugar on was the Windwalker Monk due to high DPS output, mobility, and self-healing, and the hardest was the Destruction Warlock because of how stationary you need to be to maximize DPS. Number 6, The God Queen's Fury. The God Queen's Fury scenario comes in at number 6 on our list, but is a big step up from Fell Totem's Fall. This scenario is a council style fight for the Retribution Paladin, Assassination Rogue, Enhancement Shaman, Demonology Warlock, and Arcane Mage in which you have to defeat Sigrin. This challenge is much more mechanically heavy with several one-shot abilities, but there is no real DPS check or enrage so you can take your time and not worry about how well you are playing your class. The easiest class to defeat this challenge on was the Retribution Paladin because of its high survivability and cleave damage, and the hardest was probably the Arcade Mage because of its tendency to fall over when looked at the wrong way. Number 5, Thwarting the Twins. Thwarting the Twins is the scenario for Frost Mage, Affliction Warlock, Shadow Priest, Marksmanship Hunter, and Balanced Druid, in which you must defeat Karam and Raced Mage Spear. Like the God Queen's Fury Challenge, this scenario has several one-shot mechanics, but also adds in more positioning requirements, as well as the need to kite Karam around the map. If it wasn't for the power of Bear Tartar, this challenge could easily be ranked higher on the list. The Frost Mage was the easiest class to defeat this challenge on because of the amount of AoE slows and crowd control, as well as the ability to use your pet to cover the runes in the final phase. The hardest class for me was the Balanced Druid because of the length of the cooldown on our interrupt. Number 4. Closing the Eye Archmage Xylem makes this challenge difficult with his multiple schools of magic and expert hide and seek abilities, but closing the eye is one of the more easily outgearable mage tower challenges. This challenge is available to subtlety rogues, arms warriors, survival hunters, havoc demon hunters, and frost death knights. The subtlety rogue's ability to make light of the transition phases with cloak of shadows and shadow step, along with its AoE damage reduction of faint, makes it the easiest class to beat the scenario on. Frost DK, on the other hand, has a big lack of mobility which makes it hard to connect to Xylem and generally move across the platform. Number 3, An Impossible Foe Agatha, the Impossible Foe, is the first challenge boss to medal on our list. This scenario is available to the Unholy Death Knight, Fire Mage, Feral Druid, Outlaw Rogue, Elemental Shaman, and Fury Warrior. This challenge is the hardest DPS scenario because of how easy it is to become overwhelmed with imps. If you do not use your cooldowns correctly, you can easily fall behind and Agatha can be healed to full if she doesn't kill you first. Plus those boulders suck. I had the easiest time on this challenge with the Unholy Death Knight because of its high damage output and healing abilities. Fury Warrior has a great kit for this scenario, but Agatha has a higher health pool for Fury Warriors than any other class, making it the hardest to complete on this challenge. Number 2, End of the Risen Threat. The runner-up on our list is the Healing Scenario, which is available to all healing classes except the Disciplined Priest. This scenario is extremely long, making it more heartbreaking when you wipe on the last phase. Although there is some DPS required, these phases are much easier than the healing portions of the encounter. I think the class rankings within this scenario are very subjective just based on how comfortable people are with each of the healing classes. The easiest one for me was the Resto Druid because it was the one I am most familiar with, and it has great AoE healing and utility for this challenge. The hardest healer for me was the Restoration Shaman. This was one of the only classes that felt like it just lacked in healing throughput, and the major cooldowns seemed lacking compared to the other classes. Number 1, High Lord's Return. The number one hardest mage tower challenge by far is the High Lord's Return, which is available to all tanking specializations. This is a two-phase encounter with a DPS check and some of the most annoying knockback mechanics in the entire game. The easiest class to defeat this on was the Vengeance Demon Hunter, because you have nice self-healing, decent damage, and most importantly, you are immune to knockbacks because you can fly. Prop Paladin was by far the hardest out of all 36 challenges to defeat. The Protection Paladin kit is actually very nice for this scenario in terms of DPS and survivability, 
but like the Fury Warrior, the bosses have increased health pools, making this a marathon fight where lots of things can go wrong. Well, that's the list for the Mage Tower challenges. Do you think I got them right? How would you have ranked them differently? For the full write-up, please check out the link to my Patreon page in the description below. Thanks for watching, and have a great one.